Focus on yourself and your karmic lessons to help get you through the chaos that's all around on today's episode of The High Priestess. Greetings, everyone. I'm Obleron, the Lord of Love and the Magister of the Cube. Thank you for joining me on today's Elemental Sinistry reading. It's a divination technique I devised, which uses the tarot, astrology, and the five elements. So this is a reading that transcends space and time, and if you resonate with this, then this message is for you. Okay, so we're going to start off with the element of the spirit, which is represented by the bell. And... I draw a tarot card to see what's influencing that particular element. All right. The world. Okay, so the world is influencing the spirit. And the world is also represented by Saturn. It's represented by um, the structures in which we are bound into the 3D. Like, yes, we, are, we all consists of the spirit, and we are all spiritual beings having a third dimensional experience, but we are still in physical form, and that is essentially what, what the world represents. Now, the world is also the end of the major arcana. It is sort of the end of the journey, which means that something is, something pretty big is sort of manifesting in the spirit right now. The spirit has not yet manifested. It's still in the astral plane, and as we go through the different elements, we're going to find that all of those lead back to the spirit. So this is sort of the overall theme of the entire reading. Okay, so the spirit influenced by the world. Now let's see what the astrology die have to say to that. So they can represent, the astrology die can represent either an outcome or a suggestion. Okay. All right, so we have Jupiter and Gemini in the third house. Okay, lots of lots of Gemini energy here. Okay, now I roll first for the Deccan, and then I roll... Oh, I'm sorry, I roll first for the house, and then I roll second for the Deccan. And we are in the first Deccan of Gemini, which is the Lord of Shortened Force. Okay, so, and even the Lord of Shortened Force is, is represented, or is, um, is influenced by Jupiter. So we have a lot of, and we have a lot of influence from Jupiter here. So Jupiter is not only the planet influencing this, but it is also influencing this particular decan of Gemini, which means lots of expansions and lots of choices. However, the lesson of this particular decan is that sometimes we can have too many choices and in having too many choices we are sort of paralyzed in those choices. Now this is also in the third house which is Gemini so yeah we, we have we have two Jupiters and two Geminis um, and this has to deal a lot with our communication so maybe perhaps we are having too many varieties in our communication. Maybe we have um, perhaps too much social media, um, too much influence coming from the outside world, um, too many choices. And this seems to be what what the world is trying to tell us and, and what the spirit is trying to tell us as well. It's saying, look, you have the ability to do whatever you want. You have the ability to be whatever you want and to do and to have those options, but pick something and and stick with it. Don't be so scattered that you can't devote time to anything. Um, you know, that they say the tallest trees in the world do not branch out. And I don't know, I guess there's something, is, or, you know, there, there's something to be said for that. So, yeah, it, Trim it back a little bit. Um, start to um, hedge your bets, let's say. Start to uh, to be a little bit more selective with your time and to 
And to also be a little bit more selective, perhaps with your company and who you choose to communicate with. Try not to spread yourself too thin by, you know, maybe either trying to please everyone or try to do everything. But again, bring a little bit more focus to that. Okay, so let's see as we go through our elemental reading. We now go to the element of fire. And so after the spirit is the fire, the fire can represent our human drives and ambitions. It could represent the human spirit. It could represent, um, yeah, a, a variety of things like that. Uh, the spirit is also, or I'm sorry, the, the element of fire is also, it, it sort of binds the rest of the elements beneath it together. So, you know, the water, the air, and the earth. It all is enveloped by the fire. Okay, let's see what's influencing fire right now. Okay. An inverted temperance. Okay, so pretty much what we have here is a lack of balance when it comes to to our to, to the element of fire. Um, maybe a bit of indulgence, excessive indulgence. Um, again, maybe also a type of extremism as well. Maybe since, since it's representing the fire, it could be an extremism or an indulgence in our ideology. Um, maybe maybe we are excuse me, we are perhaps pursuing something to our detriment you know it's it, it no longer serves us it's starting to it's starting to become our detriment rather than something which benefits us so let's see what the astrology that i have to say to that okay the moon in libra in the 12th house all right now let's re-roll for the decan okay so we are in the middle decan of libra okay let me get this sorted real quick Okay, so what we're looking at here is going within. The twelfth house is about endings. It's also ruled by Pisces. And with the moon's influence, it definitely so starts to bring out its more introspective and mystical aspects of what the twelfth house represents. So, again, a, a very... A very reflective and a very introspective approach to this to this extremism which is brought on in in our element of fire and with it being also guided by the house of Libra it suggests our our relationships our interpersonal relationships um, either business relationships marriage relationships um, <clears throat> all these sort of all these sort of relationships in our life, which we view as an equal exchange between one person to another, it could be our peers, it could be our co-workers, um, several, several different approaches to that. And again, what the moon is suggesting in, in the 12th house is a lot of soul searching and digging with, with it pertaining to those particular relationships. Um, the middle decan of Libra is the Lord of Sorrow, which is ruled also by Saturn. So it's interesting that we have Saturn coming up, being represented in the major arcane of the world, and we also have Saturn influencing the middle decan of Libra right here. So again, um, maybe we should look towards, towards those relationships that... I would say this will probably have to do more towards, let's say, legally binding types of relationships. And maybe we need to look a little bit more deeper into those issues that we have with them. Maybe issues with a spouse, maybe issues um, that we are tied in with, with other people. It could be even legal issues. And, you know, if, if you're going through some, through some legal troubles, I would definitely say, you know, talk to a lawyer or someone like that as well. Um... Okay, we have, we also, 
Let's see. No, we don't. We almost have a square forming here, but not quite yet. So again, perhaps in our spirit and in our fire, in our ambitions, we have run across something which, again, no longer serves us. And we must look deep within, especially when it comes to certain legal matters, to how that relationship is serving us. To, you know, where, where do I want to, how do I want this to unfold? Is it time to either, let's say, put an end to it because it is in the 12th house? Or is it time to reevaluate what these relationships in our lives mean and really, really think about whether or not they serve us or not? Okay, um, and again, with this almost squaring it, it would suggest a type of conflict, but it seems to me, though, like, with all these choices and, and with all these opportunities that it helps, or having all these choices and opportunities make it so that it causes confusion in the element of fire. So again, lots of options in the spirit, Lots of confusion in the fire right now. Okay, let's uh, let's keep going and see uh, see what we got here. All right. So we have the element of air, which is represented by swords, and that has to do with our communication. It has to do with our intellectual pursuits, um, you know, things of that nature. Let's see what it's being influenced by right now. Okay, the Five of Swords. Oh, wow. Okay. So, the Five of Swords influencing air. That is the Lord of Defeat. And what we have here is basically a type of... It's a card which, which can either be a sore winner or a sore loser. Perhaps... You know, and, and and in this particular case, no one really wins because it's sort of um, it's sort of an ill-begotten victory, I guess you could say. And with it being in the element of air, it could be that you know maybe maybe again, in the conflict with our relationships, perhaps we were right, but you know, we were right at what cost, at what price, or perhaps maybe someone else was right. And again, at what cost and, and, and what price was what what price do we have to pay for, for being right? So let's take a look at what the astrology die have to suggest for that. Alright. So we have Mars in Virgo in the fourth house. Okay. Mars in Virgo in the fourth house. And let's re-roll for the Deccan. All right, it is the first decan of Virgo. So the Lord of Prudence. Okay. Let me interpret this for a little bit. Okay, so this has to deal with a family member, it seems like. A family member or someone really close to us. Um, it seems as though... We need to... Ah, okay, okay. This is starting to come into focus a little bit more. So it seems as though we have been a little bit too... Let's say... What's the word? Maybe a little bit too nice in how we approached someone who is very close to us. Maybe we need to assert ourselves a little bit more. Mars is telling us, hey, you know... It's, it's important to want to maintain that diplomacy, but don't have that diplomacy at the cost of your own defeat. So this Lord of Defeat is starting to look more like whoever is involved was the one who was defeated rather than being the sore winner. Um, <clears throat> and again, with it being in Cancer, it would suggest it would suggest the home life. It would suggest, you know, someone in our family. That, that we may have problems with, but we aren't saying what we need to say. And with it influencing our air, the, the element of air, it could be that, well, it definitely goes back to the communication part of it, 
and that maybe they are influencing us so that we are not being able to speak as we need to speak. And Mars right here is saying, no, no, you got to, um, you got to assert yourself. Um, again, assert yourself within compassionate means, assert yourself in the appropriate manner. Don't be too aggressive. Don't be, you know, don't, don't be horrible to, to this person who's done you wrong, but also at the same time, you know, be able to, to, to say what you got to say in the appropriate way to say it. And it would make a lot of sense because here we have also in our interpersonal relationships through fire, we have a lot of extremism and we have a lot of, um, we, we have a lot of confusion going on here. So yeah, definitely. Let's see. Definitely um, start to uh, start to reevaluate yourself as an individual, and start to reevaluate those relationships as well. Okay, let's move right along. We'll come back to this. Um, so the the next element is the element of Earth, and Earth again it, it generally represents the material body. It could also represent our our spiritual wealth as well. Um, it, as well as uh, material wealth. Um, so, again, the state of our bodies, the, the state of our finances, and the state of our spiritual wealth. Okay, so let's see. What is influencing the element of Earth? Hmm. Let's see if there's any trines or other squares forming. Doesn't look like it quite yet. Okay. Oof. All right. So we have the inverted nine of swords. Now the nine of swords is generally referred to as the Lord of despair and cruelty, but with it being inverted, it means in, let's see, in this particular reading, it seems to mean that a lot of the, a lot of the despair and cruelty is coming to an end. And with that being reflecting, or, or with that influencing the element of Earth, it seems as though, hmm, there could have been some health issues happening. There could have been either physically or mentally, because again, Earth represents the body, and the mind is also a part of the body in, in the three in the three D. So we could we could have been going through some physical and mental ailments from all of this chaos in in the other elements, especially with with air right here. You know, it's it could be pretty bad when uh, someone is influencing you to 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 go against your will or to you know to j just just to influence you to to not bringing out your highest and best self. So hopefully, yeah, it looks like it looks like things seem to be clearing up a little bit with this inverted with this inverted 9 of swords. Okay, let's see what recommendations the astrology die have to say. Okay, so north node in Leo in the 11th house. All right. And hmm all right, let's re-roll for the Deccan. Okay, so we are in the third Deccan of Leo. Wow, okay. Okay, really interesting. So here we have... Let me line this up really quick. Okay, so... The third Deccan of Leo is the Lord of Valor. And essentially what's happening with, with that particular reading is that, yes, you have been, let's say, manipulated and bombarded with, with you know, people influencing our lives in a less than desirable ways. Uh, however, the Lord of Valor is, is, is holding his ground. It's, it's standing your ground. It's, it's also not just standing your ground, but being able to also have have a vantage point. So it's not necessarily like you are stuck in this situation, but you're pulling yourself out of this situation. And with the nine of swords coming to an end, the inverted nine of swords, it would suggest that, yes, that work is paying off. Um, that 
you know, being able to, to, to stand your ground. And again, we also have Mars influencing this as well. So a lot of fire energy is coming to our aid to help assert our individuality, to help assert our own sovereignty. And with the North Node also coming in, it means that it is essentially what, what we're supposed to be doing. So keep on, you know, it's, it's our karmic path within this life to be able to do that. So keep holding, keep standing your ground, keep doing what you're doing and being able to form those boundaries again with people who have, who have less than, than our best interests at heart because it is paying off and it will help to reflect in our mental health and in our physical health. You, you'll feel a lot better by just keeping on, keeping on, stand your ground. Um, you know, you're, you're on the right path. And with it, with it being in the 11th house, it again has to deal with, with sort of our, with sort of societal issues at large um, as well. So I would say, okay, okay. I would say there's a lot of things happening that's out of our control. Um, there's a lot of things like, you know, Let's say we are worried about the economy or we're worried about, let's say, an election or, you know, what, what's my future going to be? And but but really is a lot of these things are out of our control. Um, it could also, you know, the 11th house could also represent uh, social media. So maybe someone is kind of feeling, oh, well, well what are people going to think about me on social media? And with the Lord of Valor having the the vantage point, it's really just saying, keep on, you know, keep on being you. It, it's all right. Whatever, whatever the nightmare is coming in or whatever other people say, or, or any of this kind of stuff, keep on following your North node, keep on following your karmic path and keep on following what you have to do. And that will alleviate your physical and mental symptoms. And, you know, again, if, if you have, if you have to go, um, talk to a doctor, then talk to a doctor as well. You know, don't just take uh, the, the elemental synastry reading for it. But again, consult the appropriate professionals. Um, all right, good, good. Let's, let's move right along. So the last element is the element of water. It has to do with our emotions, our intuition. Um, has to do a lot with the past. It could deal with our ancestors as well. So what's influencing the element of water? Okay. Ah. All right. Inverted Ace of Swords. Here, let's put this over here for a minute. Okay. So the inverted Ace of Swords essentially means let's say the aces have not quite yet manifested. Um, and with it being inverted, it means that they're, you know, it, a lot of the, the, the negative aspects of the element of air is starting to manifest. So we have, you know, it, it could be, it could be, let's say throwing your weight around. It could be using your emotional, influence or let's say going on going on sort of emotional tirades and whatnot Let, letting your emotions get the best of you and when you let those emotions get the best of you that's when we start to to sort of go into these 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 again the, these sort of emotional tirades which which don't quite serve us so it's showing a bit of conflict in our emotional state which you know after after experiencing the Nine of Swords and, and the Five of Swords right here with, with you know, certain, maybe certain family members or, or you know, having all this chaos in, in our relationships, yeah, it, our, our emotional state is, is going to be a bit of a wreck. So what do the astrology die have to recommend for that? Okay, we have Uranus in Virgo in the second house. Okay, let me line this up real quick. Inverted Ace of Swords, and, okay, let's re-roll for the Deccan. Okay, third Deccan of Virgo. All right, 
Well, there's a bit of light at the end of the tunnel. Let's see. So, the third decan of Virgo is is the Lord of Wealth, and it is what it usually represents. What happens um, when all elements of our lives come together? Um, however. Hmm, maybe I spoke a bit too soon. Okay, so with Uranus influencing the Lord of Wealth, it's, wow, okay. So with Uranus influencing the Lord of Wealth, it's it's kind of suggesting to, to rewrite the playbook on, on how we view family and how we view money. That's, that's very interesting. So our traditional ways of life and how we viewed this, this is all what led to this sort of emotional conflict with the inverted ace of swords influencing the cups or the element of water. And Uranus always usually comes in to say, hey, it's time to start over. It's a planet of rebellion. It's it's the planet, um, again, Uranus is also over here in the 11th house, influences the 11th house. So we have a lot, um, we have a lot of this sort of extremely progressive, almost radical energy coming in with how we view things. And yeah, it's saying we need to really, really reevaluate how we view our money and how we view our family. And, you know, what what's happening there, there's, there's a lot of um, it, you know, basically, you know, we, we have we have sort of a, a familial influence here in a very negative way. We have relationships influencing us in a very negative way. And, you know, th this is pretty much saying, hey, reevaluate all that stuff. And, you know, maybe, maybe it might be time to cut some people loose. Maybe it might be time to, to again, become the Lord of Valor and stand your ground. Um, the Lord of Valor is, is pretty much standing his ground alone. Um, and, you know, everyone else is trying to get a piece of him. So this is ultimately suggesting, hey, you know, just, just reflect and really perhaps look for some alone time so that, so that you can, or, or so that we can reevaluate our emotional state so that we, we don't find ourselves going into these states where our emotions are out of control, where, you know, we, we, we don't become these sort of horrible people because of all of these external influences. Wow. All right. Um, let's see. Okay. And it looks like we also have, yeah. Okay. So we have a square forming between the element of earth and the element of water, which is, yeah, that, that would, that would make total sense because on one hand you have, you have this light at the end of the tunnel. You have, you have this, this sort of positive message right here saying, look, don't worry about everyone go at it alone. And then you have this over here, oh, excuse me. You have this over here, um, saying, okay, well, it's time to reevaluate all of our relationships and it's time to reevaluate pretty much, pretty much how we view our well-being. So yeah, it would make sense that, that both of these energies are kind of squaring each other. Um, let's see. Yeah, so there's still, there's still a lot of, a lot of confusion in this reading. There's still a lot of turmoil in this reading. Um, but again, I would always say within this, look towards uh, the positive aspects and see if we can use those positive aspects to help detangle a lot of the negative aspects. And right now, the most positive aspect seems to be the element of earth. So whatever work that we're doing in the physical world, in, in the mind and in the body, seems to be working. Um, again, stand your ground and really focus on yourself because that's really what's what's suggesting um that that you know we we we'll be able to get through this um the nightmare is coming to an end so again just stick by your guns you know stick with what you know 
and have faith in yourself and let a lot of this other stuff kind of, yeah, I mean, a a lot of this stuff is beyond our control. Again, you know, you, you can't, you can't control you know, other family members, you can't control other people, we can't control everything that happens in our interpersonal relationships, you know, we can't control our spouse or anything like that. And, you know, the the only thing we can control is ourselves and our reactions to all this chaos and clutter. And again, I would say it all goes back to the to the reading of the spirit. Um, So, here it's saying that we have a whole a whole world of options available to us. It's just with all the influence of Jupiter in it, um, when, when Jupiter influences Gemini, we we have a little bit too many options available to us. So again, start to pare it down, start to keep it simple, and just go back to yourself without letting the rest of this chaos envelop you. Okay. So I think I'll uh, leave it there for now. Okay, thanks again, everyone. Uh, Much love and blessings, and I love you all, and look forward to seeing you all next week. Thank you for joining us on today's episode. If you resonate with what you are seeing or hearing, please take a moment to like, subscribe, and share Obleron's content. It really helps him to spread the word and to grow his channel and pages. Collective readings are posted Mondays on the High Priestess's Circle. Teachings are posted Wednesdays on the Magister's Sanctum, and the music from those episodes are posted Fridays on the Empress's Theater. Posters and merch related to Obleron's teachings are available at obleron.square.site. Music from the episodes is also available at obleron.bandcamp.com. Obleron is spelled O-B-L-Y-R-O-N. Lastly, don't forget to connect with the community on Discord. It's called the Magister's Council, and look for the invite link in the description boxes and profiles below. There are astrology and wellness bots, as well as games and discussion forums available for free. There is also an exclusive members-only section with additional content and live streams for subscribers. Obleron also takes inquiries for services through Discord. In case you missed anything, all the links are available in the description boxes and profiles below. Thank you everyone and much love to all.